Okay, sorry about that. <laughs> uh, so we have the last talk this session by Roberto exploring bioinequalities and quantum entanglement in vector boson scattering. Okay. Hello, everybody. Thanks to the organizer for the opportunity to present here my work. So this is the end of my talk. I will start with the motivation to VBS processes. Then I will present the results of this analysis and finally show what is coming. So why are vector boson scattering processes interesting? Undoubtedly, the relevance of these processes is due to the fact that they are sensible to the core or deepest structure of the electroweak interactions in the standard model. In particular, the precise cancellation of potentially large contributions among diagrams with triple and quartic H couplings is the responsible for the unitarity restoration in these kind of processes, which is a fundamental aspect of any quantum field theory. Then proving these interactions reveal the dynamics behind the Higgs mechanism. In this line, there is an active experimental program of ATLAS and CMS collaborations. In addition, they are a suitable observable for new physics looking for anomalous triple and quartic gauge couplings and also for new Higgs interactions. From a personal experience, I worked with these processes in the context of the Higgs effective field theory. But now for this work, uh, we deal with two to two scattering processes among gauge bosons at three level in the standard model. So in the context of quantum information, BBS processes allow us to study different uh, bipartite systems composed by qubits and qubits. For particle physics, qubits are the photons and qubits are the massive gauge bosons. I focus on the polarization of the final state particles and consider all the possible combinations among qubits and qubits. The first case corresponds to the qubit qubit system, which has just one BBS process, which is WW to photon photon. It was already studied in by this audience and also for the TT bar production and for Higgs decays to tau tau leptons and in the diphoton channel. We also have the Qubit qubit system, which has three BBS processes with one photon in the final state. Also single top production belongs to this category. And finally, I consider the Qubit qubit system, which has nine BBS processes with massive gauge bosons in the final state. Also Higgs decays to WW or ZZ and the boson production from fermions belong to this category. All the mentioned processes allow us to investigate quantum entanglement with the highest possible energies at colliders. They receive a very recent attention and join us together in this workshop. So in the language of quantum information, the knowledge about the quantum system is given by the density matrix rho. On the other hand, the traditional approach of quantum field theory to the unitary time evolution of incoming particles into outgoing particles is given by the scattering amplitude M, which is related to the corresponding element of the S matrix by momentum conservation in this way. Hence, both formalisms are related through this equation. On the other hand, in order to reconstruct the density matrix from the experimental data, which is the goal of quantum tomography, it is useful to introduce the following parametrization in terms of the Pauli or Gelman matrices, depending on the polarization of the final gauge bosons. We have the A and B coefficients, which are related to the polarization of the gauge bosons, and the matrix C, which corresponds to the correlations among them. So what will we find in this talk? The aim of this work was to perform theoretical prediction for quantum properties of BBS processes 
in particular, locate the relevant kinematical regions of the phase space where interesting quantum mechanical measurements may be performed. So this is a first step of a more ambitious program, in particular, the determination of the related quantities from Monte Carlo simulation is beyond the scope of this work, and it is postponed for future dedicated analysis. Then the program is to define quantifiers related to entanglement detection and for testing the bell inequality. They require the full knowledge about the quantum system, which is encoded in the density matrix row. And this matrix is computed by means of the scattering amplitude of the BBS processes, as I showed you in the previous slide. This scattering amplitude depends on two kinematical variables that are the scattering angle theta and the energy through the Mandelstam variable S, and then the density matrix does too. So as Juan Ignacio presented in, in, the, in the talk, uh, in order to decide if a given system is separable or not, I implement the negativity as uh, defined in, that, in this way as a quantifier in order to evaluate the amount of entanglement index in a system for the qubit qubit and q3 q3 system because of the PPT criterion. For the general q3 q3 BBS processes, I consider the entropy of entanglement and the concurrence defined in this way. And these quantifiers are important since they vanish only for separable states. Then restrictions over the correlation matrix C are imposed. And as we know, the entanglement is a necessary ingredient for the violation of the Bell inequality, but not sufficient condition. And then it is pertinent to test both phenomena at the high energy regime. So for this purpose, the I parameter is introduced in order to discriminate among predictions coming from deterministic local as classical theories from those coming from uh, quantum mechanics. Then the, for the qubit qubit systems, the I parameter is defined as the maximum of the expectation value of the Bell operator, which was derived by Clauser and collaborators. This is the optimal uh, operator for this category. This, uh, the I parameter depends on the correlation matrix C. We have a theoretical maximum, which is the serial sum bound, which is achieved by the maximally entangled state. For the Kutrit Kubit category, I consider a generalization of the previous Bell operator in terms of the three dimensional representation of the spin operator. This I parameter also depends on the correlation matrix. And we know that it is not the optimal choice for this category. And I will comment on these consequences later. And finally, for the Kutrit Kutrit category, the optimal I parameter was derived by Collins and collaborators, starting from a suitable Bell operator. In this work, I use the same as for Higgs decays. And then an optimization through the rotation matrices U for each subsystem is performed in this way. We know that we have a theoretical maximum with notoriously is not, it not achieved by the maximally entangled state. So let me present the results of this analysis, starting from the qubit qubit process, which is WW to photon photon. It is very illustrative since we have compact analytical expressions for the A, B, and C coefficients, and also for the negativity, entropy of entanglement, and the I quantifiers. On the left plot, we have the behavior of the negativity in the kinematical plane given by the cosine of the scattering angle and the energy from the threshold up to 3 TeV. The minima are located in the forward and backward directions, and this quantifier is positive in the whole kinematical plane, signaling that the final photons result entangled after the scattering. 
even more, the maximal entangled state is achieved along this black solid curve, which is given by this expression in the central lower energy region. On the other hand, the right plot shows the behavior of the I parameter. The analytical expression is given here. And this parameter is greater than two in the whole kinematical plane. And then we conclude that this process is could be a good laboratory for testing the Bell inequality, but it requires polarization measurements of the final high energetic photons, which are not achieved by ATLAS and CMS collaboration in contrast to the case of the massive gauge bosons. However, there are proposals for studying the CP properties of the Higgs bosons through the decay photon channel, the dye photon channel. There are also recent measurements of the LHCB uh, collaboration of the polarization of the photons in bivariant decays. Now, moving to the Q3 qubit system, the um, W photon to W photon process has also analytical results. The left plot shows the negativity. It vanishes in the lower and right borders and the maximum values are approximately 0 0.3, signaling that the maximal entangled state never occurs here. The other two processes has similar profiles. The negativity is always positive in the whole kinematical plane, and the maximal entangled state is achieved in some points of the central lower energy red region. Similar conclusions comes from the entropy of entanglement. Now, regarding the Bell inequality in this category, these plots shows that the I parameter is lower or equal than two in the whole kinematical plane for the three processes. And it is somehow expected since the generalized Bell operator is diminished by the vanishing outcome of the spin operator for the massive gauge bosons. As far as I know, there is no optimization for the Bell operator in this category. And this plot also explicitly show that the entanglement is not a sufficient condition for the violation of the Bell inequality. Now, moving to the q 3 q 3 BBS processes, the concurrence of the nine BBS processes result positive, signaling that the final state result entangled after the scattering. Then I show some particular processes which are interesting. The photon photon to WW process has analytical results. On the right, we have the experimental BBS golden channel, which is the same sign W per scattering. For both processes, the concurrence has the minima in the forward and backward directions, and the maxima are located again in the central lower energy region. Another two interesting processes are the set set to WW scattering, which has the maximal concurrence value among the nine BBS processes in this category. It is achieved in the central lower energy region again. And this value is very close to the corresponding maximal entangled value. And the contrary, for the set set scattering, it has an homogeneous distribution for this quantifier with a value around 0 0.3. And we conclude that it is the less entangled uh, process in this category. Similar conclusions comes from the entropy of entanglement. And regarding the Bell inequality in this category, remember that for each point of the kinematical plane, the rotation matrices U are determined in order to maximize the I parameter for the photon photon to WW. The I parameter is greater than two in, for all the energies in this region when the modulus of the cosine is lower than 0 0.5. For the experimental BBS golden channel, the relevant region is drastically reduced up to energies around uh, 250 GeV. For the set set to WW, the relevant region is very similar to the previous one, 
and the maximum of the I parameter for these processes is the highest value in for the nine BBS processes in this category. And finally, and somehow expected for the set set scattering, the I parameter is lower than two in the whole kinematical plane. And then the natural question is if there is an optimization by choosing a more appropriate bell operator in order to get broader kinematical regions where the I parameter is greater than two. So let me close this talk, presenting uh, some future lines of research, starting from this analysis. The most obvious one is the application of this analysis at collider level events. BBS are subprocess level yielding to these experimental BBS, uh, to these experimental signatures for the LHC or future lepton colliders, which are depicted in this figure. The initial gauge bosons are emitted from the initial fermions in the collider together with two companion jets or lepton. The initial gauge bosons scatter into the final gauge bosons B1 and B2. And we can consider the leptonic decays since in principle there are the optimal ones in order to reconstruct the density matrix from their angular distributions. All the BBS final states were observed at the LHC, except for the diphoton channel, for which we have preliminary sensitivity studies. The 13 TB data corresponds to the total and fiducial cross sections, and even more, the polarization measurements of the final gauge bosons were performed in some particular processes. These experimental signatures has a very characteristic kinematics with two energetic jets with large invariant mass and a wide pseudo rapidity separations. And it is important to say that in the complete process of the collider, we deal with mixed state since we do not control the initial state. And then the density matrix is the convex sum of the corresponding density matrix of the subprocess. The, the weights account for the luminosity of the quarks inside the initial fermions and also for the luminosity of the initial gauge bosons considered as partons inside the fermions. These luminosities can be computed using the effective W or photon approximation. And then the idea is to determine the significance of the previous quantifiers using Monte Carlo simulations by estimating the systematical uncertainties and controlling the dominant backgrounds. Then the next step is to, re is to reconstruct the density matrix from the experimental data with the decay analysis, that is the application of quantum tomography techniques in the relevant regions that I showed you before. So on the other hand, another interesting line and inspired by previous work that constrained BSM physics using quantum information techniques, in particular for anomalous Higgs interactions, and also for new operator introduced by the standard model effective field theory, we can apply these techniques to the Higgs effective field theory, also called electroweak chiral Lagrangian. So let me briefly introduce this nonlinear EFT, which is based on the Lorentz gauge and electroweak chiral symmetries. The light degrees of freedom and building blocks are the same as in the standard model, but now the Higgs boson is an SU2 singlet in contrast to the standard model. We have the gauge bosons and their corresponding Goldstone bosons that transform nonlinearly under the chiral symmetry, but they are parametrized in an exponential matrix that transform linearly under the symmetry. The assumption is that the fermionic interactions are the same as in the standard model, and then the new physics is in the bosonic sector. It is based on chiral perturbation theory of QCD, that is a derivative expansion, which is a chiral expansion in powers of the momentum. Then the Lagrangian is split into terms of order momentum square, momentum to the four, and so on. And this framework is very convenient for UV completions that have a strongly interacting scalar sector in contrast to the most popular standard model effective field theory. Then the new physics relevant for BBS is encoded in these red coefficients. And 
uh, we from these new operators we expect different kinematics with respect to the standard model for example for the quartic interaction among two w's and two sets the first line correspond to the standard model prediction and in the second line this Lorentz structure is broken by means of the a3 a4 and a5 coefficients then we expect different angular distributions and then the sensitivity to density matrix could also change. So these are the summary of the main findings of this work. I explore the BBS processes from a new perspective. As far as I know, I found that the, for all the considered processes, the final gauge bosons result entangled after the scattering. And we could also ex, uh, test the violation of the bell inequalities for the um, for all the processes except this one for which we need an optimization of the bell operators. And then this analysis intends to motivate and guide dedicated experimental searches. Thank you for your attention. Thank you very much, Roberto. I see a bunch of questions. Hi, thank you for the talk. Uh, I I might have missed it, but can you go to slide 10? 10, okay. Uh, maybe you explained it, I didn't understand. Because in this plot, so if I understand correctly, on the left, you have uh, the level of entanglement. Yes, through uh, negativity. Which is, is, you know, there are many reasons where it's not maximal. It's actually quite low, no. right? It is maximal only yes. around this solid black So curve. especially in the forward and the backward region, yes. it's quite low. But then you still violate Bell inequality. No. The, the, the plot on the right, it says that yes. everywhere you violate Bell inequalities. But we have entanglement here. This is very low. And the corresponding I parameter is very near, is very close to the two value in the at the threshold or at the um, at the bound. It's very close so you, to two. This plot suggests that every time you have even the slightest degree of entanglement, you violate bell inequality. It is. But I, yeah, I don't know. In other um, studies, this was not the case. Like, um, you really needed a high degree yes. of entanglement to, to then violate uh, yes. bell inequality. Mm -hmm. Yes. For pure, for pure the, that, for me, not. For me, not. Okay. So this, okay. Okay. This is. Hmm? Work and default production factor is the same. It's the same. Not minimal entanglement, minimal spell violation is equal. Okay. Okay. Thank you. So thank you for the talk. Um, different question, different perspective. So apart from balance inequality tests and so on, is there something we can learn for VBS uh, uh, production in, in the sense that one of the questions is that if you want to discriminate standard model beyond or beyond standard model, one of the questions for VBS is uh, having information about the polarization fraction of the boson. Is there something we can we can say using this kind of approach with quantum tomography and so on. And it, it, can we make any kind of bridge of connection between this kind of quantum information construction and the way we, for, for example, we generate the events with the polarized template mm -hmm. in Monte Carlo? Thank you. I think that it it is mandatory to extend this analysis in order to explore these possibilities. This is a very first step in that direction. I think that this is a suitable observable. This is a, have a much power to, to exploit uh, this analysis. I don't know if we, we can constrain new physics, but I need to extend this, this analysis in order. Thank you. Uh, can you go to, I think it was 14. 14. Uh, no, the one with the, with the, maybe the one after. Yeah. So okay. what, what is, what is going on? I mean, <laughs> if the results for, for the I parameter, this, the region for in general, for the, for these processes, 
is very, very small, but I think that the important is we can locate around these energies and for the central scattering. No, why random numbers? I don't know. I don't know why this is the, if this is a special, I don't know how this value is the central. It's a strange, it's a strange, but it results from the computation, the numerical computation for these processes and also for the general, for the other processes too. I don't know how this is the region, this close to the threshold, but I don't know why in this region. It's very narrow, it's very narrow, yes. Yes, probably. No, no. But <laughs> so in that sense, for the Kutrit Kutrit system, I choose as the photon photon and WW as the most promising channel or for the extend this analysis at collider. This region at Collider, I think that these are pairs. I don't know. Okay. Uh, in, in slide 10, what, what uh, you call caveat, I would call it a showstopper because, I mean, measuring the photon polarization, I guess it's impossible. Have you looked in detail how LHCB does it? No, not, not in detail. I don't but I, okay, how... I did. Okay. So what uh, they do is first, for example, in B2K star gamma, the gamma is not a gamma. It's an E plus E minus pair with an invariant, an invariant mass lower than 2 GV or so. And then they assume that uh, this E plus E minus is a photon. It's a, a virtual photon. And a then photo. they do it like this. I'm, I'm not sure you can do it in Atlas or CMS with an invariant mass of a 2 GV. So the other option is, it's, is to go to a K star with a three body decay. And then in a three body decay, they measure the polarization of the K star mm -hmm. and they assume the polarization of the photo. Of the so photo. they actually don't measure the polarization of a photo. Of a real LHCV. photo, okay. Okay. So this is a question for me to the experimental people. <laughs> uh, so coming back to this uh, isolated energy, this corresponds to bell inequality or to entanglement? The reduced region is for the bell inequality, the I parameter. No, no, but the one when you, oh, yes, exactly, to the right. So this is bell inequality. Yes, bell inequality. And the, on the left to, also, what is, which is the bell inequality? Is it a CGLMP? It's a... What is the bell inequality exactly here? The uh, Collins... Uh, CGLMP, C Colin, C Popescu, yes, and others. Collins, Popescu. I see, I see, yes. I see. So the question is, is there, and and do you have, have you tried to optimize entire and here, some measure of entanglement. It's hard. I know that it's yes. hard, but ha ha have you tried to do it or not? I, for for, for, for WW point, to WW. So for each point of the kinematical space, I numerically, I determine the rotation matrices in order to optimize the I parameter using this definition. These guys. For, but, but you haven't tried to uh test any true entanglement measure here no right no, so that would be the that would be probably the answer so if you did that it's well like minimizing overall decompositions like trying to to optimize this is hard numerically hard problem okay but probably what you would see is you would see similar thing which would say 
that you have entanglement with, say, momenta, very strong beyond this region. Okay. So what one should do probably is to take the faithful, what we call faithful entanglement measure, okay. try to perform hard numerical task and compare. Okay. So that's my comment. Now my question is for um, two by two, two settings in that quality, has anybody, maybe you try to check what is called not clauser horny shimony hold uh, because here it's known this formula that actually we derived in the 90s, it's, it's optimal, but it's known that for higher spins, mm -hmm. the same results put into different inequality in terms of probabilities may discriminate between spin half and higher spins. Okay. Even if you have only two settings. So my question, it's called clauser horne Have you tried that one? No, no, no. I take the the clauser these operators and perform the computation right. so maybe even for ww okay. one might try to you know to look okay thank you okay i had one more question or comment can you go to slide 17 please 17. so just to say from all of the processes that you analyzed here i mean if i look at, at one which can be very relevant to test the DLHC, it could be gamma gamma to WW because you know that you can get the gamma mm -hmm. also from the proton itself, like part of the parton distribution function. Yes. And there are some analysis, at least in Atlas, who try to, to look at this kind of process and this might be relevant. So so just yes, to say. For, uh, okay. Uh, so you don't, yes. like photon, you don't need to get from this process. You can like get it directly from the from the proton as, okay. as an initial state. Okay. Okay. Uh, I think we can uh, let's thank Roberto again and we can close the session, go to lunch, and we come back at two for the next session.